Now, if you look at issues that did capture <coughs> still presidential level attention a long time after the Cold War, uh, nuclear terrorism would be very close to the top, if not at the top. Uh, that was true for President Clinton. It was true for President yeah. uh, George <coughs> W. Bush. It was true for President Obama. Uh, the but at the same time that you had that focus on nuclear terrorism, there didn't seem to be the ability to have the balance between that and the pure competitor problem and nuclear deterrence. We talked about that a little earlier. Well, no, I don't think I don't think there's any possibility of balance. Mm -hmm. Simply because, as I said, in your mm -hmm. the pile of hard problems you work on mm -hmm. has to have a combination of it's important and I have an idea what to do about it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how hard the problem is, if I don't know what to do about it, mm -hmm. uh, then it just lays on the two hard problems. Mm -hmm. We clearly had some clear views of how to deal with nuclear proliferation. We have some clear views about how to curtail nuclear proliferation. Mm -hmm. We certainly have clear views about how to deal with deterrence. Uh, and so we spend a lot of time, mm -hmm. reductive time, reductive attention on that side of the equation. Mm -hmm. The fact that we don't on the other side is not because we're ignoring it. It's just because, what would you have me do? Yeah. 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 So I don't know how to balance that. Mm -hmm. The, <coughs> you've been on many of these advisory committees and special studies. The, what basically is the role of an advisory committee for an organization like STRATCOM or SPACECOM or DITCA? Well, it's simply to focus expertise mm -hmm. and experience on a set of problems mm -hmm. that are not easily or more effectively addressed internally. Mm -hmm. If you look at the range of advisory activities that, uh, and I don't say on ends of the scale because I don't know where the scale is, but mm -hmm. for example, here at IDA or other organizations like IDA, it's very simple. The sponsor has a question they would like an answer to, mm -hmm. and we or, and other organizations like us uh, provide our most, we focus expertise on it, mm -hmm. uh, usually with much more continuity than the government is able to generate internally. And we give our most objective answer. And then they are free to do what they will with the answer. So the advisory efforts that I've been involved with range all the way from, from just answering a wide range of questions with the best answer we can to putting together groups of five to 10 mm -hmm. of probably the best experience and the widest set of experience you can find anywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you find that if the problem is important enough, people with that experience are willing to commit their time to it. Mm -hmm. And that's at a much higher level. Uh, tend to be problems that capture the attention of the most senior leaders in the government. Mm -hmm. Then there's the in-between. There's things like the STRATCOM Strategic Advisory Group or the SPACECOM Independent Strategic mm -hmm. Assessment Group, where you have a group of people who in fact focus on, on their set of problems. Mm -hmm. And those problems vary from, from issues that you make progress on, and you make progress on, and you make progress, mm -hmm. and issues where in fact you can produce a executable Mm -hmm. set of recommendations. Mm -hmm. But the great strength of these kinds of groups is they simply bring to bear a 
a set of expertise, a set of experience, a level of continuity that would be very difficult to find internally in the government. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they're quite valuable, obviously, I think, since I serve a lot of them. <laughs> but I wouldn't if I didn't think mm -hmm. it, was, it was worth our while. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the proofs is whether or not the people who ask for this kind of help actually use it. Mm -hmm. And the fact is we have a very high score mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. That uh, they ask the question, they ask for help, and they use the answers. So I let them grade it. <laughs> one of the, one of the <clears throat> ways that advice might help them is with solutions, but another way is just about how to think about a problem. And are there any of the big nuclear-related issues we've been talking about where you, you feel that you've been involved in an activity where you really helped them think about the problem in a fundamentally different or sound way? Well, yes. The, uh, you know, in the nuclear world, we went, we went through a very long period that people forget about where we evolved to the nuclear strategy. Mm -hmm. We evolved to a way of thinking about it. Uh, we evolved to a very solid understanding of our principal potential adversary. And we sort of got to the point where we, we assumed that we had always understood the Soviets. Mm -hmm. That we had always had this capability to predict how they would respond to a set of, of issues. And the fact is, that's not true. Mm -hmm. It took us years to develop mm -hmm. that. And as we, as we move from a world where things changed only incrementally year for year, year to year, well, you could go study a problem for a year, and the answer was still relevant. Mm -hmm. We went from that world to a world where if a sponsor asks you a tough question and you go off for six months and work on that mm -hmm. and you bring the answer back to the sponsor, the sponsor's likely to look at that and say, hmm, I wonder why I asked that. Hmm. So the fact is that, that <clears throat> while the strategy of deterrence and the theory of deterrence is unchanged, practice of deterrence, mm -hmm. I think, needs to change radically. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that set of great minds and continuity focused on that problem that we had during the Cold War mm -hmm. that led to our deterrent strategy mm -hmm. and our deterrent forces. Mm -hmm. Okay, well thank you very much, General. It's been a very illuminating discussion for me today and I look forward to our continuing it. Well, thank you. Enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.